Okay, sorry. All right, off we go. All right, people, so we have, uh, we're gonna, I'm going to talk about robustness today. This is a beautiful um, body of work that's emerged in the last 15 years. But we're talking about a really deep fundamental problem. Why do things explode? Systems that seem to be around for a long time. Why do they go pop? There will be um, a connection to the power law size distribution business as well, of course. So that's all sort of tied together. Uh, Pleplo will come back. Other pieces like that. You don't have to worry about that. Um, okay. Uh, and uh, all right. So a couple of things. So it's a doomsday today, right? 10-10. Tuesday. So you know that, right? This is very useful. This is very, very useful. Um, <coughs> assignments. So we have them great. We have a bunch graded, and I have solutions through one, one through five for you to pick up. But I'll do that at office hours, right, over at Farrell. So come by, collect your things. People did well, so it's good. Very heartening to see. Um, what else? Uh, okay. I think an important thing that we need to talk about is, okay, you have an assignment. It's a little one relatively about percolation, which is very nutritious, because you will see how that connects into this robustness stuff. We're going to talk about forest fires in the next, uh, in, in today. So it kind of works very well, but it's a classic bit of sort of system story, toy model stuff. All right, so that's that thing. It's a reference to Psych, for you Psych fans. Uh, okay, so instructions are here for Thursday, which is going to be kind of a pitch session of sorts, right? I mean, you can get up and pre uh, present your work um, or your idea, and it, maybe it will be exactly what you carry out for the rest of the semester. I've, you know, a number of you have written with uh, your ideas, and they seem pretty solid. So, um, but in the past, people do move around a little bit. So I'm kind of orienting this, perhaps, maybe as, you know, give it your best shot, and then afterwards, if if you have overlapping things or whatever, you may want to recombine. Optional. Okay, but basically it's going to be two minutes each, so however that's divided up. If you're a group of three, you'll get to talk for six minutes. All right, so that's, that's all the instructions are here. Is there anything that is unclear? I, no groups of four, that seems too much. Right, five is right out, to use a quote. Um, and it's a little conference, this always seems to be very enjoyable. I'm never sure beforehand, but it always seems to be very enjoyable. Um, the students, you know, you guys will, will love this. People do lots of different things are interested in lots of different things, which is great. Um, this is not, you know, here's my great theorem or whatever, or I've solved everything. It's just going to be about, you know, what the problem is, you know, what, what you're going to do about it, what, what maybe there's some giant data set or whatever it is, this is where it lives, you know, I'm going to find it, whatever it is, and then, the pl you know, your plan, right? So, um, it's a quick statement. There you go. So, one to three slides each usually is a, not a bad way to do it. You can have more if you have lots of pictures. Uh, always with the funny little uh, naming thing, that's helpful. You don't have to worry about... You don't have to worry about this. I, I, will, I, will, I will probably number them. So um, I'll, I'll randomize the order, right? Graduate students go first, and then undergraduates with a random ordering. All right. But I need to know which groups you're in. So you need to tell me these things. Practice. There you go. You can send me PowerPoint. I'll try to get to work. It could explode horribly. That's the way it works. Okay. Questions? So I'm planning a talk with a couple of people where I think about pitching our own individual ideas. Yep. A couple of them go pretty badly, and one of them goes well. We'll jump on board with the big idea. Yeah, I mean, it's up, I mean, it's up to you, as long as it all makes sense and so on. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to vet, you know, if people are doing the same things, uh, you know, I'll try to tell you that beforehand, but the information isn't coming in super fast. So, um, you know, it may be that people stand up and say the same thing. Maybe. Yeah, what's, what's the policy for projects overlapping between this and other classes? Yeah, so, oh, and other classes? Yeah, so you should, you're, so you, that's fine that you're working on a bigger thing. It just sort of have a chunk that's in here and a chunk that's in the other. There should be, you know clearly partitioned off in some way. I mean, there could be a core that you're working on, right, that, that, that both of them depend on, but those projects should have some, you know, they're not the same. Yeah. See how it could go wrong, right? Or <laughs> the very clever student could, um, yeah, save some time. Lara. 
Yeah, so they're going to trail off. Well, a couple more. Right? And so you can focus on these things. Yeah. Uh, but you've done well. The beatings have come out, you know, fairly, right? They've, they've come out regularly, and, and so uh, there'll be another. So there's an assignment. There is an assignment due on Friday. Um, it, it isn't intended to be super long. And then there'll be one for the next week, and then we'll be a, it'll be a little bit more gentle, all right? Is that good? And then there's no final exam, right? The final exam is you guys present again. Another mini conference. All right. What else? Uh, these are really important tweets, high quality tweets. Um, look, you know, I'm going to talk about stories at some point, but you know, all of the stuff that's going on with so called fake news, and, and you know, it's all very relevant to where we'll get to. Sorry, I didn't mean to look at that. Um, this is very important comedy here. This was, uh, what was it? Names for, uh, did I get it? Names for the new science buildings, right? Did I tell you that? They're called, right? So they're called um, innovation and discovery. But a more honest one would be, you know, trial and error, or eureka, or segmentation fold, or foomph, or please see solutions. Anyway, I got a lot, a lot of responses. People enjoyed that one. Abandon hope, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, God, why does it burn? <laughs> or, huh? No question mark. Yeah. Anyway, um, so some amusement there. But I thought we could even just go for the GIF. We could just meme it. GIF. I'm from an older time. Um, but Arrested Development fans, it's just a perfect, perfect Joe moment there. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway. Yeah, sorry, this is just random commas, right? Punctuation matters. This has got itself a lot of... <laughs> even, even an M dash would have saved that poor man. Okay. So be careful out there. All right. Uh, just ran they're just random. What else? We had this. I guess I should go back. Yes. Oh, yeah, the cat thing. So this is going to... We'll come back to this, right? So cats have slitted eyes and they look evil because they're cats. Um, but I, I don't know why this, what, this surely has been studied before. But there's a link there to a 2013 or 14 paper uh, from an uh, optometry group. I mean, the point is, you can have very, very, right, this is 1D, so you're not letting in much, and then you can, the transformation, right, the, the gain is enormous, potentially, right? Whereas just the circular one doesn't have that range. And, and sheep and so on have slits like this which makes them also look a little crazy, but um, they need the whole... We can see this way. In fact, there's a guy, Changizi, I mentioned him with the, that Lego piece, right, about the number of components in systems as, a, as scaling a system size. That was a paper by Mark Changizi. He's done a lot of stuff on illusions. And he has a story that the bifocal, you know, the two eyes in front, is not just for 3D so much as being able to look through foliage like comp look, be able to sort of see through kind of messy um, landscapes. I don't know. He has a lot of interesting things. Okay, anyway. Anyway, but this seems like something that, you know, Galileo would have said, but, you know, someone thousands of years ago would have said, and it got named after the wrong person. That's odd to me. Okay, all right. Okay, good. The madness. Uh, so we're into this section here. Uh, this is good fun, very interesting, and then we get into networks, okay? So it's going to be about how things, these are about how systems are laid out and how they might explode or how, how they might function well as a, uh, uh, you know, as a, um, a property of how they're laid out. Then we get into networks, as I, I know I've talked, and then it gets into contagion spreading, and then a little bit about stories at the end. So, good. Um, tarot cards, of course, make sense of this, but this is what we're working on today, this one. Some excitement for Star, Star, um, Star Wars geeks because of, uh, what was it? The uh, trailer for the next one. <laughs> oh my God. Wow, they can really sell a story. Anyway, this is about the slit thing. This is pretty great. So if you see this, if you watch this closely, you see that? I've just got a little string I'm dangling, which he thinks is fantastic. That's a pretty interesting variation just from, woof, there you go, yeah. Anyway. So it works for trying to figure out where to kill things and how to be cute as well, which is an interesting coupling of, um, of a feature, cuteness and murderousness. Okay. Okay, so that's good. I think that's good? Yes. Why can we find 
Um, I mean, not all, snakes, you know, like, yeah. They're not all on the cute side. <laughs> it's the big head thing, usually, big eyes, right? That's pretty good. <coughs> yeah, there's a little uh, coating in there to make you like babies. Because things are kind of fighting against that liking part, you know, the screaming, the, <laughs> the incredible lack of sleep, all those things. Uh, my second one just got her braces this morning. She was incredibly look, just unbelievably forward-looking human being. She's been talking about it for like a year. She's excited. <laughs> we'll see how that works out. Uh, okay. All right, so it's all going to be about this picture here. This is uh, from a paper by John Doyle, Gene Carlson, and this is going to be about forest fires. So we'll, but it's, it's much more general than that, but that's going to be the thing we'll hang our hat around. Okay. Robust yet fragile. Although, you know, from a narrative point of view, they've made, what, f three or four of the movies have this Death Star thing in them? Uh, unbelievable. And they always get blown up. Okay. Um, okay, so, complex systems, right? They, uh, you know, they're around for a long time, and, and we get to call them systems, and they're things, you know, whatever, ecosystems, social systems, um, geophysical systems, but now and then they go pop, right? So blackouts, of course, in smart grids, diseases wipe out, whole uh, populations, wildfires, a uh, terrible thing just happening now in San Jose, right in Northern California, awful. I mean, Australia is full of these things. It's getting, it's just hot all the time, although sometimes half of the country is underwater, while the other one is on fire, other part is on fire, so it's a strange place. Um, earthquakes, right? So these things that, you know, going along fine and then boom, right. And we've sort of covered this in terms of these heavy tail distributions, all right? Really? So you, you see, at home, I'm told all the time to be quiet. <laughs> so I'm, this is a very difficult thing for me. And I have to say, my home, where I grew up, three boys, we just, everyone just yelled all the time. So visitors were just terrified. OK, so um, this is exciting. I'll do that. I'll talk into the board. OK, so this is exciting, right? Um, but this is all, you know, so we, we, you know, we talk about, we have good words for it, catastrophic failure. Uh, but of course, most of the time, very unexciting things happen, right? The system is there the next day, just being itself, with lots of um, whatever it is, organisms trying to eat each other and just being around, right? So, um, so there's a lot of robustness. And so, um, so not as, not as exciting. So then there's this notion that maybe sort of a, there's a power law, at least this kind of heavy-tailed story, right? So lots of little things go wrong, but they never spread terribly. And then occasionally, boom. All right, so that's our emblem, right? All pretty good. Of course, there's a reveal with the plans, where they got the plans from. Um, but, you know, mostly pretty good. You could, you could, yeah, okay. And then it goes pop if you get the wrong one. Oh, I'm going to show you some of these. This is fun. This is thematically appropriate. Not really. Sure is leaving in a big hurry. If they identify us, we're in big trouble. Look at him, he's heading for that small moon. The small that's moon. moon. It's a space station. Caught in a trap and it's pulling us in. Okay. See? I'll have a few of those. Okay, so um, <laughs> uh, so um, so how do you get these systems, right? So it could be evolutionary processes, right? Whatever they are, they could be big scale kinds of things, but certainly also engineering and design, right? It's humans making stuff, putting things together, smart grid being this great example. Uh, you know, and then you have strange uh, you know combinations of these, right? We connected the world up with planes and traveling around, and then we can get things spreading everywhere and disastrously, right? And the spreading is different to what it used to be. If you go back in time for those kinds of phases, disease spreading very much kind of moved across, say, Asia and Europe in sort of just a wave, right? Just sort of this, just, just a wave front. Um, but now you have planes, and someone goes and coughs on someone over here, and it's a different thing. We'll get to that with small world network structures later on. So, right? You know, We've talked about evol evolution doesn't necessarily produce, you know, optimal structures, but it produces pretty good ones, right? They're trying to balance a lot of things, and part of what they're trying to balance is being around tomorrow, survival. Um, so uh, so the, the, the raw idea in, that goes into what will be called, it's here, highly optimized tolerance, is that you have systems that are they're pretty good, right? And there's some uncertainty to the context they, they live in, right? So there's... Um, whatever, squirrels eating uh, cables now and then, 
Uh, you know, code does this, right? Some things possibly go wrong, but you, you need to have little pieces that clean it up, if you can do that. Obviously, our bodies, right? Our immune systems are just these remarkable uh, things that, generally speaking, fight off all sorts of stuff all the time, all the time. Uh, and they learn, you know, immune systems learn, they do all sorts of things. And so, so that, you know, again, uncertain conditions, right? The stuff that's coming at you has variation. If you talk about organizations, uh, you know, they're, they're in some business environment and things change, right? There's technological developments, whatever it is, right? So they're, they're in this sort of sea of uncertainty. So there's a, there's a uh, you know, a, a kind of a nice analogy for that area as well. Highly optimized tolerance. So these are systems that have been optimized to do something, but they're also tolerant, right? They can handle some variability. That's the, that's the big story. And, and so there's, there's that, and uh, yeah, I mean, you know, congrats, well done here on the acronym. This is excellent work. Not everyone works on this very well. I mean, there, there are some pretty weird, like the Patriot Act is, a, I mean, all those, all those things are acronyms, yeah? People work very hard <laughs> to, to make this happen. Um, <coughs> I mean, we have uh, scraps, right? Yeah? So if you, yeah, could we have a scraps ad? So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, come to scraps tomorrow. Uh, Andy's going to be speaking. It's going to be awesome. We're going to hear about um, the energy systems laboratory and the uh, yeah. uh, And scraps, for those of you who don't know, stands for student complexity research and energy Right. So it's the really important word, right, is, is in there. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. So this is actually, so very important fact about this, no professors. Yeah. Right. No they're not allowed because they're idiots. Yes, bearable, yeah. That's, that's successful, yeah. But, yeah, we create it so you don't. Um, and that's been going for a while. So, yeah, you should uh, go to scraps. Um, so I created one years ago called SPAMS at MIT, which was Simple Persons Applied Math Seminar. Same idea, food, no professors. Pretty enjoyable. You can still find it online, actually. Um, okay, so Gene Carlson and John Doyle. Uh, let me. John Doyle is a very interesting character. So he, at some point, had the world record for the hour, hour t um, distance, distance ridden in one hour in a um, human-powered vehicle. You know, which can be anything, right? The little eggs with wheels, right? The crazy bike things. So he's a he was a very good athlete, and they just sort of shoved him in this thing and made him go as hard as he could. Um, but <laughs> just a very funny guy. He's at Caltech. Uh, this is an abstract. This is the abstract of the very first paper he wrote. Um, where is it? Let me go back. This is quite impressive. Uh, the title was um, Guaranteed Margins for LG LQG Regulators. And the abstract was There Aren't Any. That's it. Anyway, so he's a pretty humorous guy. So he, yeah. He had this great website. It was like really old school 90s stuff, which listed all of his you know, world records and things. <laughs> but I think it's gone. Anyway, quite an animal. And he's been a great, uh, you know, I mean, they came up with this. And he's certainly been someone who's wandered around the world and told everyone this is the way it works. So, and it's, not, it's pretty good. I'm going to tell you this is a pretty good thing, right? It's not just because we have a, uh, an excellent uh, you know, uh, speaker for it. OK. so. Uh, these are the things that go into these hot systems, high performance and robustness, right? So they do something well, and they're pretty good at like, not blowing up. Uh, and they're, they're essentially they're designed to actually handle this um, uncertainty, right? So they've, whether it's through evolution or just acknowledge it, somehow characterizing the environment, they're pretty good um, in, in, in handling some variation within a certain scope, right? So very unpredicted things, very, you know, very unpredictable or you know, rare events can make them go pop, so that's a robust yet fragile. They produce, and this is going to be in contrast to, say, the things that you will make with, say, the percolation model or some of these other kinds of models, they produce very low entropy configurations. They're things that really have very, that means they have very clear structure, right? So they're not just random things. And power law distributions, of course. So I'm going to have a few words, and then we're going to work through an example. Uh, you know, w where we can sort of look at it and you can, we'll see if we can figure it all out. But um, I'm going to just kind of lay out the, the plan um, with words. Okay? Right. Uh, so a couple of things. Variable transformation, which is, you know, this benign thing. If you're going from one probability distribution to another, variable transformation. 
we saw that uh, if there's an inverse parallel relationship between the two variables in question, and one has some nice uh, distribution, Gaussian or something, then the other one can have this uh, parallel law size distribution. Constraint optimization, which is what it's you know, not unuseful then uh, to have worked through the Mandelbrot example, even though it seems that Simon's model is better. Um, it's fun to talk about Mandelbrot getting angry. And, and that constraint optimization is a very you know, powerful story in general. So we're going to be doing the same sort of thing there again. So the parallel is going to be that, that relationship between two variables, whatever it is. Um, uh, Pleplo is bad, right? So we don't want to put a power law in and, and get a power law out. That's not what we're doing. Um, media, mild in, wild out. Okay, so, uh, and the idea again, so this is just a little summary of the stuff that we did, which had the TARDIS, that Doctor Who thing. Um, there's a characteristic size for X, right? It's some finite um, variance, it's some reasonable distribution that has a nice origin. Y does not. Okay, so that, that, these are just some pieces we've had before. So let's get to the model. So I'm going to talk through this basic model. This is not the only way to do it. This is sort of a, just a very, you, you can put on a continuous um, thing, you can put on networks, you can do all sorts of stuff. So but we're going to just have a square grid, n by n, so it's going to be an easy thing to, well, the basis here is easy to code up, right? It takes a bit of thinking to do it properly. And it's kind of uh, surprising how hard it is to do this for large n, you know, and I would sort of mean like 10,000 by 10,000. It does take some computational power. So this is going to look just like um, percolation, and percolation we've sort of framed that in terms of maybe a, you know, like a, a soil or, a, you know, some sort of mater porous material through which we were flowing things. Now we're just going to think of a, uh, a forest, and there's going to be a probability, right, squares. We have these squares, there's a probability, you flip this coin with probability rho, um, there's a tree here which means that the density of the whole system will be rho as well. Okay, sites are empty with probably one minus rho. And then the idea is very simple. We, we're going to start fires, right? Because we, so as pyromania comes in, we're just going to be crazy. And we will start a fire. There's going to be some distribution. Pij, this is not going to be a crazy distribution. Maybe, you know, it's some sort of exponential distribution, Gaussian distribution. It will be uneven. That's really all. It will be uneven, right? So not uniform. And you can think of this as um, teenagers smoking or what, what, something they shouldn't be doing, and then or lightning strikes, right? We'll think about lightning strikes because it's more... Um, that's better. Okay, so there's, there's some probably of lightning strikes is over a long period of time. It's going to be a bit odd because we'll have lightning strike, it'll burn, and then we'll sort of put all the trees back and let it sit there for a while, and then another, another bolt of lightning will come along and we'll see how bad that is. And we'll put it all back together, and then we'll let it happen again, right? So you sample over many, many times. Right, so you can have all these things. You can have a constant one, and that we'll want to think about what kind of configuration would work there. But the point is it's not. It's going to have some variation. It could be all sorts of things, but the simple one we'll look at is... Uh, um, that, that it's sort of, right, we're going to have this square, we'll get to it, I'll show you, but we're going to have this um, uh, world, our little forest here, and it's going to be much more likely up in this corner with a decaying distribution, decaying in different, different ways um, in the x, y directions. But this is going to be a mild distribution, right? It's actually going to be a Gaussian in this particular example that's mild, it's nothing extreme. Right? It's more likely to happen in this corner, but it, and it decays quickly. But there's, not, there's no power law stuff in there. Uh, we'll just have fire spreading from tree to tree. If we're really good people, we'd put on a hexagonal lattice, but it's okay. Um, just nearest neighbor, right? So you, in, in this situation, you just have, we just think of the four nearest neighbors, not the eight. Okay. So, this is a, and you can sort of see this is a pretty easy thing to kind of code up, especially if you just, you know, you don't worry about this probability thing. You just, you know, make a little forest with, right, throw them down and then start lighting things up. And you can imagine making this little bit of code where this tree is on fire and then it lights up the trees next to it and so on and so on. You clock it out, right? So, and then you sort of, you'd have to compute how many trees burn. So, what's the, 
Um, and so that's right, right. Connected cluster of trees will burn completely, and that will be your, the damage. And the way this will be framed will be, what's the actual um, number of trees left will be the thing we're interested in, right? So if, if, if just one tree burns because it's isolated, then basically the fraction left is one, right? That, yeah. <coughs> OK, uh, empty sites will block the fire. And the best case thing is we're going to build fire breaks, right? We'll actually have fire breaks. But if we do this randomly, we're never going to have these kind of random if we just sort of random, if you, you can imagine actually just making a whole forest, we're not going to do it this way. Just every, su every square has a, f a tree on it, and then start taking them out to, to create fire breaks. We, we can do it like that. Or the way we'll do it is actually just adding one tree at a time. This is not the way you would build a forest, and it's just sort of a, it's a toy design model. But if you, did, if you just randomly take out trees, you're never going to really create very good contiguous lines, right? It's just random. So it's not going to work. So we're going to have to think about that a little bit. Um, and so the idea is going to be, so we're going to, as I said, we're going to add one, far, one, one tree at a time. So n is a big, n, you know, there are a couple of numbers associated with our system. n is the, the size of the grid, n by n. Uh, and then what we'll do is, th this is a very important uh, quantity. It's an integer, one, two, three, up to n squared. So this is um, the number of ways that we could add one tree. We're going to test the number of ways we could add one tree. So imagine you've got your forest, and again, I'll have pictures. You've got your forest, there's, there's some trees, there's some blank spaces, and you, you decide, I'm going to try adding one more tree here, right? So you put it there, and then you test it in this artificial way where you randomly light bits up and see how far it spreads, put all the trees back, light it up again, put all the trees back, light it up again, and see how bad it is on, a, on average, right? So, you know, if, you, if, you, this, if you've got a bunch of trees here and another, you know, another forest here and you put a new tree here, this is going to be a terrible thing to have done, right? So that, that's going to get a bad score, right? But if you put the tree over here, it's not going to do anything too bad, right? So you'll be like, oh, okay, that's okay, yes? Yeah, so they only spread to the nearest four. Right, so you get your tree here. It can only go this way, this way. Tree's on fire. Um, it can only go this way, this way. <laughs> okay. <coughs> yeah, you should think of it however you want. If you, lightning is better, right? Lightning is good because it feels like, you know, it's not us. We're not involved. If you're a pyromaniac, you might want to consider a narrative where you're lighting up trees. I don't, I don't endorse that. Okay, so um, the D here will be how many ways we, how many trees we test. So, so there are a couple of stages to this, right? So there's, here's our forest, right? There's some forest, da, 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 it's got some stuff going on. And we say, we're going to randomly choose a location and now test, you know, 10,000 lightning strikes on it, right? We go, boom, let it burn put it back together, reset everything with our new possible location, do it again, do it again, do it again. And then if we're D equals 2, we'll, we'll go over here and we'll, we'll say randomly choose another location and we'll try that one. And then we take the best of these two. So this gives you, if D equals 2, we have a comparison between two tree locations. If D equals 1, basically we don't test anything. We just randomly add it. And that's like percolation, right? So D equals N squared which is going to become computationally very costly, d, d equals n squared, we actually try every location where there's no tree. Right? Put, right? We just sort of systematically go through, put a tree in, test, 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 take it out, put in a tree in the next one, test it a bazillion times. Does that make sense? So that's going to be an exhaustive test, and we'll take the best next location, which is different to saying here is absolutely the best thing where we've tested every possible combination. It's an, it's an iterative thing. We're building out which you know, is sort of the best thing we can do. Because there are an unbelievable number of ways of adding you know, half the trees to, um, that, that could go into a forest. Right? Common, it's a binomial combinatorial explosion. So this is going to be a design parameter. So d equals 1 essentially means no design. d equals 2 means you know, like just a little bit of testing. Right? Yes? So zero trees. 
to start with, and then you add one tree. So when you add, yeah, so you'd start, and I'll, again, I'll get to the pictures, but I, maybe it's helpful just to talk through to a little bit um, first. Yeah, so you'd start with a blank slate, and there's some, there's some lightning distribution, right? So uh, what we're going to have is something like this, that it's actually much more, maybe I can draw a sort of a grid like, this is a probability density, right? So it's much more likely in this corner for lightning. And there's nothing to start with, and we just randomly choose a point. And of course, you know, this one only burns when lightning hits it exactly. If we choose here, it's going to be the same sort of thing. But if we choose one in this corner, that's going to be kind of a bad place to put a tree, right? It's dead. Is it just confused and sad? A little weasel. Whatever. Um, okay. Not that it matters. Uh, so, so does that make sense, right? So, that, so you can see even from the start, there's going to be a bias towards putting trees down here for this test system. If d equals 1, it doesn't matter. You just randomly choose a location. You're not comparing it to any, you're not comparing any, anything. Yes? Um, yeah, yeah. But something's going to emerge from this that's a bit, right? So this is a, these are, uh, this is like a continuous, smooth. Yeah, this, so you'll see, you'll, you will see the ghost of this thing. Absolutely, yes. Right, so, it, so we've got these uh, things. We've got D. We're going to have... So this is n by n, so that's one, that's one parameter here. We've got d, that's the number of tests, uh, the number of um, uh, tree, uh, let me just not say that properly, um, the number of new trees, tree sites we test. Right, so d equals 1, we just test 1. We don't actually make any comparison. d equals 3, we're going to choose three possible, and we're going to do that randomly, three random sites. And then there'll be another number in here, which is, we say, number of tests. You know, maybe this is 10 to the 5, whatever it is, some, some large number, depends on the size of this thing. But let's say, you know, this is 10 to the 3. Um, you can actually do it exhaustively, but the, the idea is, I'm going to add a tree here, and then I'm going to hit it with a thousand lightning bolts. Every time I hit it with a lightning bolt, you know, maybe this all burns, it's all gone, but then I put it back, reset it, second lightning bolt, third one, fourth one, and then you average how much damage is done. Yeah, so, okay, so, so there's a plot that we'll see, which will be like this, right, which will be, um, what's the density of trees? So that's, if we just added trees and we didn't worry, right, there were no burning, all these sorts of things, then as we add trees, we're just, this is going to be the, the density. Now, this is the um, fraction of trees added. Right, so if we've added half of the possible trees, then the density is just going to be a half. Right? We're just adding them, adding them, adding them. Start with there are zero trees, and eventually we've filled in the whole forest. And so this is just going to grow. But what we'll be interested in is not this plot, but a plot of, on average, how many trees are left after we burn the thing a lot. And so Early on, most of, the fire, most of the lightning strikes miss the trees, and they're not connected enough to do any damage. But you, what we expect is this is going to happen, right? So that once trees are connected enough, on average, you do a lot of damage all the time. And at this point, when all the trees are actually filled in, any lightning strike, no matter how probable or unlikely, actually destroys the whole thing every time. Right? They're all connected one match or one lightning strike, it all goes. So this has to be at the end, what we'll call the yield, like what's left after an average lightning strike, 
on average, how much is left, it's going to go up linearly because you can't really damage this thing much because they're disconnected. But it's going to get to a, a doesn't matter what this is, eventually it has to go to a point where it drops to zero because they're all connected. So instead of doing, actually, you know, uh, in code, instead of saying, I'm going to do a thousand of these, you can um, do it like this, where you say, all right, I'm going to put a lightning bolt here, then one here, then one here, just systematically go through it all and weight it by the probability that a lightning bolt happens in those particular things. So you can, kind of, you can actually do this exhaustively. You don't have to do it in a simulation stochastic way, like randomly choose a location, you know, set that tree on fire if there's a tree there. You don't have to do that. You can actually go through the whole, every location, and then just multiply by the probability that a, a, a lightning bolt hit that. So it makes, seems OK. Yeah. Um, this, so this is the second part. So the first part is, you know, how many trees are we going to choose? How many sites are we going to choose? And then there's the testing. So it's the secondary part, right? I've put a tree down, and now you actually go through the whole forest. Is that, yeah? There are two stages. Mm -hmm. And what would be really hard is, yeah, testing every... That, yeah, that, that becomes expensive. It's okay. Um, no, it's okay. You just sample from this distribution, right? It's a 2D distribution. Well, you just, th there's an underlying distribution for lightning strikes. So you just use that distribution to find where the next lightning strike is. And then run it, and then put everything back. Any trees burnt, put them all back, and then just choose another one. You just keep choosing. But when you choose another one, you, could it, choose it, the same you could, yeah. And if it's you know, if, I mean, we could. The extreme could be it's a delta function where all the lightning strikes are in this corner, and that's fine because that's what it is. So you can actually, instead of doing that simulation, you you just go to every site, and then you multiply by the probability that that site, yeah. Right. So what you're doing is approximating the first thing we just spoke about. You're approximating what you can actually do. Uh huh. Use the same forest with your newly your your test tree added. You've got one, each time you're adding one test tree. Right, you're at, your 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 forest is being we're we're slowly adding trees to this forest. We start with none, then we put in one, then we put in two, and we're we're at this stage. And then the next you know round of simulations, we're going to add one. We're going to test d possible new sites to add a tree. So if d is seven. We're going to do this seven times. We're going to choose a tree site and then do all the tests, choose another one, do all the tests, and then we take the best one in terms of least damage. Yep. You, you could also make your, yeah, you could make the worst possible forest, yeah. yeah you, you could do that too, yeah, yeah. right. And so you get this number and you're comparing it to the whole. Right. The idea is to show that after a while everything's connected and the whole thing breaks down. And it's connected in an interesting way that you, okay, we'll get to it. I'll show you, because the pictures will come. Actually, pictures will come, and that will help. But you, so you're right, and we'll, yes. Um, is it faster to take the pictures? Um. You know, you, you, it's interesting, actually, let me think. You could do it, but I think the problem is, so if it's, if it's full, right, 
and you take away one tree, everything still burns, right? Unless you just hit that one hole. So it's true that you would actually optimally sort of take away the tree. You know, in this case, it's very likely up here. So you take away that tree. I mean, it, I don't think it would get fire breaks, actually. I think it would just start to build out like a little blob here. It would just try to protect this. What's gonna, this is 2D, and we're, we're going to see 1D structures emerge, which will be the fire breaks. I think it would actually kind of create a little 2D piece here. You could do it. Hmm. You could do it. Yeah. Yeah. Think about it. That's good. Um, so let's just say again, what, random addition for D equals 1. There's no testing. I mean, you could sort of run it, test it, but it, you're going to ignore the results of the test. Um, and D equals N squared, you test all possibilities. Obviously, as the trees are filling in, you don't put a tree on top of a tree, right? The, you get less. Um, it linearly decreases the number of possible places to test, but that's fine. This is just, you know, so this is, you know, in quotes. All right. Okay. So this is the thing I was trying to get to. Um, we're going to measure the average area of forest that's left untouched. Right. And we'll get the distribution of forest um, fire sizes. So C will be the size of the forest. And then the yield will be the density that we, we started with. You know, maybe we've got a forest that, that takes up half of the, air, the, the bigger region. And then we subtract off what's the average forest fire size. And that's what's left, right? So the best we can do is have no forest fires, right? They're, just, they're very small. And then Y equals rho. So that's the best we could have. And that's this. You know, this, that's what this is. This is the best. So I'm going to write this out as yield. And this is the best um, y equals rho. Right? Y equals yield. Is that okay? So that's a plot we want to produce. Okay, so we should be... Just a couple more details. This is, this is, and I'm taking this from this paper. There are many papers they wrote um, on this. This one particular one I'm focusing on. So our probability distribution is going to be broken into two pieces that are both um, Gaussians, right? So they have a mean and uh, a standard deviation. They're different, so there's going to be a standard deviation in the y direction that's larger than the standard deviation in the, the uh, x direction. So it's going to make this look um, a little more like this. Does that make sense? Right, so more width in the y direction, which is down. I mean, it's measured, in, yeah, funny way. Uh, okay, but it basically, you know, it's, it's tailing off strongly. All right, so let's look at this, and let's try to figure this thing out. Okay, so four possibilities. This is just for n equals 64. It's a very small example, but actually it's still kind of hard to do this if you run on a laptop or, the, or even a supercomputer. It takes a while to do this well. So we've got 64 by 64 grids and uh, design of uh, parameters 1 to n. So n means, right, it's, it's, it's still um, you know, very small relative to the overall number of possible places and then n squared. So this is the full design thing. And these Four plots are not showing exactly the same thing. They're showing the maximum yield, right? So you, all of these started from, there's a design process that created all of these, and all of them started from, oh, and I should make this clear. Trees are here, right? The trees are in white. So no trees in the black spot. The trees are in white. So you can see clearly, right, there are less trees up in this thing. This is the, ra this is the random addition case. There's no testing here. There's no design. So this is the designless model. Um, and if, if you, right, so if you, incredibly, if you, uh, there's an A in here, I'm not sure about that A, but if you, right, if you start a fire here, it's going to burn, actually it's going to sneak through there, it's going to sneak through there, uh, it's going to stop here, stop here, it's, it's going to burn perhaps a little more than you might think. Um, but it's probably never going to create a, a global disaster. So this thing has been built without any um, kind of knowledge or uh, taking into account the, the distribution of lightning strikes, right? 
which again is um, stronger stuff here. It decays in both directions and decays more weakly in the y direction. But all of these four pictures, they've been built and built and built. We're adding trees, right? We're, make, we're going from a totally black one to adding each time we add, we get a new white square. And they've been stopped, the simulations have been stopped when adding another tree, right? So in this case, there's only one test, right? It's just like you randomly choose one of these black sites and add a tree to it. Here, you're going to randomly choose one of these black sites, add a tree to it, and then do it, do all the tests, and then choose another one, and do all the tests again, and choose the best one. Um, here, you're going to choose from n of them, n squared, which of course means you would test all of these. In these, all of these cases, the simulation stops because the next tests don't give us your better yield. Right? It actually gets worse. Right? It actually starts to create something like this. Right? You, it's unavoidable that you will make a more... Uh, the yield will go down, that the forest fires will be on average worse. Even though you've added one more tree, the average forest fires will be such that they increase enough to mean that things are going backwards. So one more tree in here just starts to connect too many open spaces. Of course, it's sort of just a randomly chosen one. So you know, if you think about it, but that's the point. It's not a design one. It's not, there's no design here. And this is you know, getting onto the order of a half of the forest that's been filled in, which is sort of a, a percolation story here. You can see that this one, which is only, you're only testing two, and again, it's going to stop because it's not being very smart. But it's actually created a border, right? There's a forest break uh, because it hasn't added trees here. And it goes all the way around up to the top. So this is off by itself. In fact, that's connected. There's a little cell by itself. And that's a cell. So in fact, there are, it looks like there are three cells. Yeah. And then like a tiny one there, for example. But if you put a match out here, a lightning strike out here, all of this burns, right? All of this white contiguous stuff burns. So that's a really bad, so this is this robust yet fragile situation. It goes boom. It's unlikely, right? This is, these are Gaussians. They die away like e to the minus x squared, so they die away quickly. You're going to get lots of little forest fires in this one. Um, you will, you will mo most likely get your fires starting up in here, and they're stopped, right? They, there's a, literally a firewall around them, right? And, and that analogy we've taken out to, right, that metaphor, we've lifted it to the stock market, to you know, all sorts of things. Um, I mean, we, and we have firewalls within, you know, very special kinds of facilities, right? So you need to be able to close them down and in stories in spaceships, of course, right? Okay, so the one that's got, so, so this is a jump to 64 choices every time. And at this point, there are still 60, there are at least 64 uh, empty spots, so you could, you know, actually choose all of them. Uh, and you see that this kind of missed these ones. Could have easily put a tree here and a tree here, but the simulation came along, chose 64 of them, tested them all, and said, you know, I can't do anything better, because obviously it missed these ones, and any tree being added here will make a breach, right? So that'll open this up, it'll open any of these up. Um, you know, it would have been good to put them there, that's fine, but uh, these, are, these are pretty clean. And then the, the, the much more exhaustive one, uh, you don't see any of those little tiny errors, if you like. So, to your point, right, it does reflect the underlying distribution, but it's, um, the, it, we're seeing 1D structures emerge, right? The, one in this, this is a, the boundaries here are one-dimensional, we're in a two-dimensional space. Um, of course, you can think about two-dimensional surfaces uh, creating the boundaries in three-dimensional space and, and, and so on. Um, but these all stopped at different points. You know, many more trees filled in here, right? This almost basically filled it all in, except for some just little, little boundaries. So how are we going with this? What do you think? Oh, um, were these generated with exhaustive lightning strikes? They sh should have been. It's like not, so not exactly sure, but I think they would have been. Ah, um, it should. Let's see. Yeah. 
Yeah, because you're turning the um, probabilistic strikes into a determinant, into a exactly quantified thing. If you if you did it like this, you know, you just sort of tested by just zapping a little bit, then you get some more stochasticity in that. Hmm. Yeah, so it's um, they they it's a product of two Gaussians, okay. right? So this this P I A B and J, right? So it's just index I J, you know, I's and J's. Um, so it decays like e to the minus x squared, basically, right? But these they have different um, standard deviations. So this is this is this is larger, and that's so. I kind of redrew this a little bit to show that the distribution is more, yeah, right, decays, decays faster in this direction than it does in this direction. So that's, and so, you know, if you set them to be the same, then you'll see more of a, yeah, and you'll definitely, the lines will, right, the, the um, fire breaks will, will line up on a 45 degree line, yeah. All right, so, um, so these are very low entropy structures, right? This is a high entropy structure. It's just a random mess. These are low entropy, right? This very, it's very design looking. It, it fits a purpose. Um, you know, it's still a, still a toy thing. So, uh, so generally, these, opti these highly optimized ones do well, right? So there's going to be a lot of lightning strikes in here. You go, fump, fump, fump. The trees grow back. It's crazy. You know, we like to keep, we keep these fire breaks going. Um, but, it, you know, for whatever reason, just, you know, you're unlucky, or if the conditions that you live in change, right, then you're in a lot of trouble, right, because you've, you've grown this thing or built this thing to withstand a certain, or to, to function in a certain kind of environment, and then you are toast, potentially. Yeah, it's not good. So, uh, okay, that's robustness and fragility, good. So let's look at a couple of things that pop out of this. These are, again, this is really small um, simulations, but still a bit surprised by how hard it is to simulate bigger ones. Anyway, so this is this, is this density, right? So we're filling in trees. That's what this is. And this is the yield. And these are for these four design things, right? So this is the design um, of one, which is no design. So we're just randomly adding them. So when we get just above a half of the trees filled in, it starts to get worse, right? I mean, you still add trees, just keep doing it, just, right? I mean, all of these things, we can just use this method to fill in all the way up to the whole forest being filled in. Uh, but the point is to say, okay, you know, let's get to a point that's optimal as far as that design strategy is concerned. And so the one that where we're just randomly filling in things we actually get into a lot of trouble around about halfway, and then it starts to be that it's connected enough and it's not respond. It's, it has no, that system has no, no, no knowledge or is not built with any um, acknowledgement of the underlying uh, lightning strike distribution. So it, it's bad, right? It does a bad job. Uh, the one where we actually just have d equals 2, and then this is n and n squared, d equals 2 does extremely well, right? If it's pretty lightweight design, we're just testing two things. It didn't look great, right? I mean, still, it's not, there's a pretty silly looking fire breaks, but uh, it started to get something. So, certainly just going out to d equals 2 gets you a pretty good system in terms of functionality, and d equals n, great. Right? There's no point to test at all, as far as this model goes. Yeah, so, th so the simulations all run, right? You can, you can just keep adding trees. You just do your tests, and you choose the best one. The, the ones on the previous slide show you the configuration that was found here for d equals 1. d equals 2 
and d equals n and n squared. What was the best one they produced in terms of um, yield, which is the fraction of trees on average that are left? So it's nine in terms of the right. number. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So all of them, there is a, you can imagine a little video where this goes from being completely white to, to um, sorry, completely empty, which is the black space, to white, so it's all filled up. Um, and as you go along that plot, as, as that kind of happens, you know, you can also have this plot, and it shows you that, in fact, you want to kind of wind it back and not fill it in. With this method, it's not good. Eventually, you start to produce a forest that's got too many connections in the wrong places. It's going to burn a lot. But these ones, so, so the story is, you know, you get here 80% of the trees are filled in, right? And here, you know, 90% of the trees have, are filled in. It's a lot, right? There's a lot of trees in, the, in this thing, and it's being hit by lightning strikes. For this one, you know, you'll only end up with a, about 20% of the whole space is going to have trees left after the fire. But these ones, they, don't, they basically don't even register it, right? On average, they do really well, right? So these ones are really intact over and over and over again. There's, there's a variance here, right? There's something, sometimes they have terrible things happen, and that's the... That's the story. These are just, this is crazy. N equals two. This is, yeah, ver it's varying the size of the grid, which is a very important thing to do, but you don't have to worry about that one so much. <sighs> yeah, that's it. So this is dotted. This is dash dot. There's dash. And s s there's, a, there's a solid curve here. It's got a little yip in it, but that's a solid curve. This one? That's the, yeah. There are dots, yeah. You can walk up and look. It is easier from him, yeah. Um, yeah, visual communication information, very important. Um, these guys did not really care too much. Um, okay. So this is going to be, this, this looks better than it probably is, but th the idea here is uh, these are the probably distributions for the, the event sizes, right? So these are the forest fire sizes. And um, what they're showing here, this is for, um, this is for D, I'm just going to look at this one. This is the log log plot. So this is a, I mean, this is kind of crazy looking things. There are 20 orders of magnitude here and three orders of magnitude here. What they've done is just really offset them. Right, there's an arbitrary offset between these. Okay, so it's a little cr it's a little scrunched in, but these are all very broadly, you know, roughly parallel size distributions. There's not a lot of variation here. It's a, you know, this is a, a paper from the end of the 90s. Um, these are complete design ones. D equals um, n squared. N is 64. But what's being plotted is um, the density. That, right, they've run the simulation until the density is 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 up to 0.9. So you can start, so even with the n squared one, even when 10% are filled in, and it's sort of hard to believe that. It can't be true. It really can't be true. Anyway, the claim is, I mean, it makes sort of sense when you get further out with higher densities that the, the you're getting parallel size distributions for events. So the so there isn't a special density for the forest to produce these parallel size distributions. Yeah, so this, you mean? Yeah, um, yeah so that's the m major event in these things where everything burns. I mean, I think what's happening is you're getting, but that's, Okay. See, this would be an interesting... So these are reproducible. I can tell you that for sure. These are reproducible. You can make these things work, right? Yeah. This one I'm not so sure about, which would be a good project. For you, yes. <laughs> Since you asked. Um, 
So, you know, it's very gratifying to produce these ones. These are doable, though. I mean, if you've made the other thing, you can certainly produce these. And I'm not, I don't feel very good about this. I've never felt very good about these ones. But, the, you know, I'm just going to tell you what their claim is, which is that there isn't a special, right, you're building this thing. And, and you can see as you sort of, this is very high density, right? This is like 98, 97%. As we sort of pull back from it, we're going to have trees, you know, like this, sort of, sort of speckled out here, like, empty spaces. Um, so we're still going to get the same kind of distribution uh, for, for a good stretch of density. I'd really like to. We should redo that. Hmm. I think that's a lie. It can't be 10%, right? There's just nothing filled in. Yeah. Yeah, event size. So you, you um, so th so Yield was the density minus the average event size. So the event size is hit it with lightning according to your distribution and then let it run. And that's an event. And the, the number of trees burnt. Burn. Number of trees burnt. Yep. And the cumulative probability of the. This, oh, okay. So this is complementary cumulative distribution. What, we, what we've called complementary cumulative distribution. This is not, I mean, this is not the cumulative. Cumulative is the integral up to, right? This is one minus that. Or the integral from a point to infinity. This is comp this is the CCDF, just as we've done, right? The flip of this is the ZIF distribution. Yep. You're right. I mean, it's definitely. I mean, if we had a, if we had this one evolving along, we'd see it packing in here, but 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 the thing is, you wouldn't you shouldn't see any other point except for for that, right? So it should be just you. You're not going to get a range of um, events. Well, they're they're plotting they're plotting n squared and n equals 64 on that. Yeah. No, no, so I, I hear what you're saying. So, right, you're saying, it, of course, they, they, it starts to fill in here, right? right. Yeah. Um, so then if you run lightning on this, nothing happens, but this one very, s you're just going to get events of one size when it happens. It's unlikely when it happens. It's always, so this should be a delta function, I would well, think. But they also put n equals 64 on the same plot. So that's the, the clusters further that are further to the left are the n equals 64 stuff. Oh, I see what you mean. Um, I, th I see what you mean, but I think this is, I think this is design. The design is n squared, and it's for a 64 by 64 system. Oh, oh yeah, that's true. Is that right? Okay, good. <laughs> this is science, right? It, gets, it should go downhill. <laughs> At any any high point of understanding, it's just downhill from there. Okay, as you start to. Doubt yourself. So I'm suspicious about this one. I don't know about this. I think it should work once you get to a sufficient density, but that should be like, you know, pretty high. 0.1? No. No. Okay. All right, I believe this. And I think it's very important. This is, you know, I, I do think what they're saying is, um, is okay, though, that, that at some point there isn't a special density, and that's very important to what we're talking about here. Right? There isn't a special density, because we're going to talk about self-organized criticality, and the idea there is that the system is somehow tuned to some magic number because um, nature is magic or something, right? So... Um, I've got another video. Let's watch that. Hmm. I curated this one slightly. Luke, at that speed, would you be able to pull out in time? Oh, it's great. just like Beggar's Canyon back home. Classic. Use the fast loop. <laughs> so great. Let go. 
I'll just let this go. Force is strong in this one. Luke, trust me. Both are killed. Rebel base in range. You may fire when ready. Command is primary ignition. I have you now. What? Yahoo! Look out! You're all clear, kid. Now let's blow this thing and go home. So that was Remember, it. The force will be with you always. The one in the million is actually the narrative causality piece, right? So that's that's stories, right? It has to be one in a million. Otherwise, you wouldn't do it. If it's one in a hundred, you don't really talk about it. There's a great Pratchett piece on that, actually, where they orchestrate it to be one in a million, so, <laughs> so, so they'll succeed, right? So you succeed when it's one in a million, right? The good guys always win when it's one in a million. Anyway, all right. Um, but it's a great example of robust yet fragile, because, again, stories. But, uh, but there are a lot of things with, you know, we have the Achilles heel story, right? That is exactly the idea. Pretty good. Just could have used a pair of tongues or something, just held onto the ankle in the river sticks. Anyway, so, um, right, we'll come back to that. Okay, I know, we've been talking, but I want you to understand this. I think it's a really interesting, powerful piece, and it will connect to this next bit about Starbucks for some reason, and machine learning, actually. Okay, so, uh, random forest, right? So this D equals one, we've sort of talked about this, so, um, but this is the point, below the critical density, of percolation, which is this piece that you will work on this week, just to kind of get that into your heads more, right? We're adding trees randomly. At some point, there's a giant, there's a, uh, uh, a what we call either a giant component or a percolating cluster. That if your system is big enough, you can see that big thing connected together, right? So it becomes macroscopic. And therefore, you know, if it hits that thing, it, you, a, a non-zero fraction of the, of the um, forest will burn. And above it, right, you get, so there's this critical density. Uh, and it turns out that, and this, you don't have to figure this out, but it turns out that at, this is, this is a property of all of these thermodynamic systems, like the icing model and those pieces we talked about, at the critical density, you get a power law size distribution of com forest components, right? So below the critical density, you have like little isolated pieces and it's the sort of truncate, it'll be an exponential distribution for the sizes of components. Right at the, you know, theoretically, right at the um, critical point for an infinite system, blah, 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 you get a power law size distribution uh, for components. Ah, sorry. So sad. <laughs> what's what's wrong with it? It's just wow, that's so interesting. It thinks we're driving. <laughs> wow, it does say do not disturb while driving. <laughs> wow, that's really weird. Um, thanks, Apple. You care? I know you care. <laughs> so weird. Um, God. Uh, okay, let's see. Um, yeah, so, so that's a really important point, right? We're interested in why these distributions arise. They do seem to be everywhere, blah, blah, blah. We've got um, Simon's model for one particular story for it, but you know, there's another, there are lots of uh, reasons for why these distributions appear. And, and this is why percolation doesn't hold together, right? And we also see we have this random structuralist beast of a thing. But the hot forests, they're highly structured. We see this 
parallel size distribution. See, that's, that's the thing. That's why that point one can't work. It's above critic, it has to be above the critical point. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But there's no special aspect of rho C. You don't have to invoke or find some mechanism that tunes the system to be at that critical uh, density. Right? This is this I the Id idea of this other thing called self organized criticality is that you would have to tune it. That somehow there's a self-tuning aspect to the system, not us, some magic thing that puts it at that threshold. Um, the forest states are tolerant, right? Most of the time, nothing happens, uh, or you know, the, the the burns or the, the the sizes of these burns aren't too bad. Um, and this is this is good, right? If, if things are well characterized, but um, if we've made a, if either as you know in an engineering creative kind of way, if we've I uh, have a bad idea of what, or a bad uh, version of what the uncertainty of the world is, or what the, what the um, sort of attack di uh, um, distribution is like, then we're in trouble. Or if it changes, right? If it changes in a way that we, of course, have no control over. Um, some other pieces here, I know I'm kind of uh, talking up to the edge of these things. You know, so I think I will have to sort of just talk about this on next. Tuesday, we'll talk about self-organized criticality. Then we'll talk about how to put hospitals and other things down to make people happy or companies happy, depending on whose side you're on. But Thursday, uh, all right, we'll be back and we're going to have this uh, like mini conference. And I want you to send me your, your uh, project ideas, please. Thank you. Okay, all right. Team.